everyone, and welcome to the panel tonight. We're the four marketers. We'll introduce ourselves in just a second. So tonight's panel will be on the eight marketing trends to consider in 2021. So this is a very practical conversation, and we're all going to be bantering and doing lots of conversation about eight key topics to be considering in the next year and uh, what's happening and, and the trends. So we'll start by with introductions. So I'm going to start with Mike. Hi, everyone. I'm Mike Sandys from Oddball Marketing. We're an action-orientated marketing agency focused on delivering uh, tangible results. And hi, everyone. I'm Christopher Melotti from Melotti Media Copywriting and Message Marketing Bureau. And as an agency, we look after all the words and the messages behind all of your marketing. So copywriters. Hi, everyone. I'm Ariel Bowers. I run Two Drafts. We are a full-service video production and animation studio here in Sydney. We do everything from TVCs to multi-platform social campaigns for all your video requirements. Hello, everybody. My name is Kristen Hancock from Font & Swatch Branding and Design Studio, and we provide branding, visual communication, and digital communication services. Perfect. So tonight we will be discussing, uh, so what's in store for 2021? So um, we want to preface this by saying that what we're going to be discussing over the next hour and a bit will be not to overwhelm you. <laughs> They're going to be talking about a lot of things that are coming up in trends. So the idea is to give you a bit of our practical guide on what you can look at and what you can consider next year and to take notes during this and write down what you like to learn more about um, because that's the, be the best way that you can take on board what we're going to discuss tonight yeah. mm -hmm. and um, even to preface that though remember you don't need to take all these things on it's yeah. really yeah, about yeah. feeling out what's feeling right for your brand your product your service throughout exactly. this exactly exactly and so the idea is to open your mind up to things you can consider in your strategy next next year so without further ado we will uh, get started on number one which is well the top trend so automation so everyone's heard of automation off we go. <laughs> AI. AI, is AI. It's a big part of marketing. Uh, so I know Mike jumps in. So you start. Oh, I've, look, I've got plenty I can talk about. But I mean, <laughs> the, the interesting thing about automation is that, um, you know, we sort of, it's, it's not new. It's been around mm. for a while. Yeah, it's great. been this huge topic for years now talking about machine learning, artificial intelligence and all this stuff that's kind of coming. Computers are going to rule the world. Um, <laughs> I'm sure that'll happen eventually, but what's been really <laughs> Not interesting, yeah. <laughs> Not 2021, uh, which is interesting because, you know, we look at what it can do for us and it can be very powerful so long as we don't try to um, over rely on it because the technology, as far as we're concerned, it's helpful, but it's not quite there yet in terms of being able to take over. And that's uh, actually a really good point because a lot of people ask me, uh, about like AI marketing and they go, oh, chatbots and all this kind of stuff. And the problem that's happening and what we're seeing at the moment, which is one of our key trends, is that there's that conversational marketing. So where it was like everyone jumped into AI and bots and automation and it was kind of like, oh, it's not quite ready yet. Customer service yeah. wants that. And yeah. then it kind of been like, quick, put humans back in the element. And so what we're finding now is on websites is there's, it's like, AI starts and the bots start, and then it's like takeover humans, from humans. Humans jump yeah. in down the yeah. conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, has anyone seen that? Well, I, yeah. yeah, I'm seeing um, two. There's there's two scales to it. There's large scale AI and automation, like programming, etc., which is mm. really starting to work. But oh. that's big data. That's big AI, yeah. and that's expensive AI. But the the smaller stuff, with exactly as you said, with whether it's chatbots or you know, um, pops up with a messaging, and and it starts off automated and it leads you down a funnel. So the mundane yeah. tasks are being taken yep. away. So the easy yeah. bit, which is why are you here? What do you want to do? That's working reasonably well. Yeah. yeah? Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's guiding customers so. quickly yeah. to a destination. And then human inter interference comes in and humans basically mm -hmm. take over from there is what we're seeing. And yeah. that's it, right? Because the, the big corporations, they can afford to really spend yeah. all that money to get that very intelligent, fully immersive uh, experience. But the smaller brands can really use automation as well. Definitely. Even with those more personalized um, banner ads, yeah. or if they've watched a certain, I do video. So if they've watched <laughs> the full video, you know that they're interested in that particular product, then you can start an email campaign or questions around the um, automation of that product. So yeah. there are ways that you could really streamline, a small business could streamline using this without having to put a huge amount of money 
uh, yeah, exactly. It. That's where I, I see the really exciting usage of it. Yeah. Is that yeah. When you look at what it can do for repetitive tasks. Yeah. Things that are happening, this yes. whether you have to have huge amounts of involvement, it's doing the same thing over and over again. In terms of email marketing and email uh, or lead nurturing and stuff, automation tools are fantastic. Yeah. And yeah. There's just so much power and it just reduces down the workload on the business while still providing great value to the customer. Uh, the key thing is just like chatbots is working out at what point do you stop having the system mm. um, do all of the work for you and you start to get human intervention in there so that you can continue to ha- actually have proper personal conversations. And yeah. one thing I would preface that is make sure that AI actually benefits your business. Mm. This is yeah, yeah. like I was, I was working with a client today and it was a real estate agency and they were using automation to follow up their appraisal. So when they went mm. to a client's um, house and they were checking out their, appra- uh, their appraising their home, then an automation email was sent to them with all the details already order filled and that's value add because they've, they've actually seen over the yeah. last couple of months that, that they've been closing a lot more sales simply because the, the, the agent doesn't even leave the door. <laughs> and it's like, here's all the information and here's all your things and yeah. here's how you apply. That's really good use. It's not for the sake of AI, which is what businesses can get caught up on. It sounds yeah. trendy and so they jump on it. Well, one of the key benefits there is the speed. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's something that yeah. you, you know, if you looked at and tried to rely on a human to try and interact and do all those things, we put it in this to-do list. Yeah, we'll oh, get to that eventually. Back to the <laughs> list. You know, the list of everyone, well, they contacted me a week ago, so I need to go back now. I mean, that's where small and medium-sized businesses can just really excel from automation because they can have those initial touch points now. Yeah, well, it allows you to scale in, in terms of your service and what you're doing. Mm. That bigger businesses normally can handle all of that stuff and small businesses couldn't. Mm. But when you implement these things with software now that's really quite cheap in terms of yeah, yeah. And that really actually, affordable. And that's, because this is going to be a practical discussion, what does that look like? It's like if, someone, if someone's listening right now and they go, okay, how do we implement AI? What's the best sort of starting approach? I mean, Mike, you do a lot of this. AI is probably a little bit of a different story in terms of automation, oh, automation from what we would it. use. Um, so an, a really easy one that we you might want implement. To start with that before you do. There's a difference between automation and AI. Yeah. AI yeah. is learning. Automation is when you're programming um, Things to rep- specific tasks, yeah. repetitive tasks, and you're automating them, taking out the human element, and you're actually getting to a, a fast-tracking a conclusion of where the customer wants to go. Yeah. yeah, well put. Uh, well put. Nicely. nicely yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> that's it. Dang. <laughs> um, yeah, so from an, uh, the, using automation within your marketing efforts and stuff is brilliant, and we use like Active Campaign as one of our ones that was sort of mm-hmm. as a go-to because it allows so much automation capabilities. It's very low cost for what it is and allows you to manage your deal pipelines. So you can have, you can, you can take into consideration um, lead opportunities, how much they, you know, as they warm up and how they interact. And then you can set up all kinds of if then sort of situations mm. you can integrate with so many other systems that just makes for a more um, seamless experience yeah. for a customer that kind of comes on board. Whether you use that from a, a as simple as a, uh, a newsletter, getting people to sign up yeah. and then sort of, doing a few uh, early emails to them in sort of an automated sequence right through to, you know, real estate and you get mm. people's details that come in or someone that comes into a shop and you gather their details and then you set up an automation flow. They're really, really powerful tools that are so easy to implement. I yeah. mean, we use that in our own business um, with Active Campaign, and we have very specific funnels. So if it's a financial services company who came through, you know, we have five touch points that are all around our financial services marketing. Mm. Um, whereas if it's, you know, a not-for-profit, they get a completely different uh, automated service. And all of a sudden, instead of having three to five team members that are just keeping up with making sure we're nurturing all these leads and educating these potential clients, um, we can utilize automation. Yeah. And it's amazing. Yeah. It's the way to do it. Well, so like, and that's is, what it's going to be doing. From a branding perspective, I actually like the automation from a branding perspective, because we can actually start really isolating a different target audience and we can really channel our messaging through and we can keep that brand consistency so that we're taking out some of the differentiation oh, that used to come it. in or the noise. <laughs> <of> <laughs> the <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden, yeah, yeah. <laughs> remove the humans. Yeah. <laughs> But it does. It allows us to really plan a little bit further in advance and you can drive that automation and you can drive that conversation Mm. with them Um, in the knowledge that just don't overstep it. And from your perspective, Chris, the one other thing I like it, which would play to your ears, is Mm. that you actually get to ensure that the language is the correct language. When somebody starts talking to you, they're getting the right message and they're getting it, you know, even if it's as basic as automating a Facebook ad response. So, you know, do do you want us to contact you on A, B or C? Mm. The way that you talk to somebody, what language you use and how that message is delivered 
all comes back to brand and messaging. Oh, and a lot of clients actually have been doing that for me. Like recently, they've been going, here's all the chatbot stuff. And they give me this network yeah. and they go, this is the, the stuff we want it to say and now make it our tone yeah, all the exactly. time. And, and it's little things like even, uh, like you mentioned, Kristen, it's like you've got someone that you need to automate a message to, for example, and you need it to sound like the brand, you know, sound like that. So the, the person doesn't have to get involved. It's like straight off. Yeah. I mean, so really people are worried about automation because some feel like it's not personal enough when in reality, <laughs> it, it, it allows, it to make it it allows really you yeah. to, to yeah. make sure it's saturated with your tone of voice and your brand Absolutely. identity. It allows us to create yeah. very specific video content that's right towards that customer. Mm. So in reality, if it's done correctly, it can actually be a even more personal mm. uh, streamlined experience. And that's, that's the, the, the interesting well, one there is that it's making sure that you're using it not to do all of the legwork. And yeah. and, like having AI try and work out and solve all the problems is where we actually see it really comes unstuck and doesn't point. do a very good job. Whereas if we use it just to refine good strategy, um, so when we're using it, so in Google Ads, for instance, we can use machine learning and AI to improve our ads and ad, ad performance because you look at um, Google will automatically optimize the ads and show the ones mm. that are performing the best, getting the best uh, conversion rates um, or depending on what settings we choose. And so it will then tailor the messaging but we have to start off with reasonable messaging and a reasonable yeah. understanding mm -hmm. of targeting the right keywords, the right audience beforehand. And if we do it that way, we get really amazing results. Whereas if we don't and we just kind of let Google do its thing <laughs> with yeah. just some very poorly targeted words and stuff, yeah. it'll actually spend a whole lot of money very fast. Because what you're basically doing is you, you're, um, the, the, the computers and the machines are basically learning from a huge wide set of potential options. And so it's got to test all of those and spend right. money oh. testing all right. of that. Yeah. And then goes, no, no, Spend no, your no, money. Your money. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, they're, not like they're, they're, in terms of companies worried about you spending a whole heap of money yeah, trying yeah, to work exactly. it out. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's fine. <laughs> so, so long as you can kind of narrow it down early on and really mm. focus the campaign, then when it comes to the fine tuning of things, we find that it really works well to absolutely optimize a campaign and get the best possible results. Mm. So long as you don't, you know, as I say, let it do everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So look for me, look, automation yeah. is one of those ones. It's a trend on our um, on our discussion tonight because it's here and it's here yep. to stay. It's here to Same stay. Same with the AI. Yeah. Yes. Um, if you're not using it now, you should start thinking about it. Mm. There's lots of experts out there who can help you with it. Mm. Um, and you don't need to leap in and think that, oh, my God, I've, I've got to go big no. with AI. And, no. um, and automation, you can actually start really small and, and get really good benefits for mm. your business. So with yeah. that, I think we'll, so look, that was a really good time. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. It's, it's not that it was Christmas right. yeah, so, I know. So, so that's what we're trying to say is that yeah. jump on automation, it's here to stay and there can be small steps, big yeah. steps, whatever you feel comfortable with. Yeah. All right. Number two, social responsibility. responsibility. Okay. Yeah. So this one's a little bit of a hot topic mm. in marketing because of making sure that with all the channels we have available right now, are we being very careful with with supporting those, you know, other bodies that are out yeah. there. Um, so who would like to, to well, weigh in? I'll, I'll jump in with yeah. Backdrop as well. Because I think we've come through back end of 2019, all of 2020, massive global social upheaval. Doesn't matter yes. whether you're just talking about COVID, whether you're talking about uh, bushfires in Australia, whether you're talking about um, political environments just really significant upheaval. Mm -hmm. um, and social media has been getting a pretty severe ticking off mm. from a lot of areas. And I think businesses need to be aware that um, their consumers are looking for a little bit more. They want they and, are. And, and That's what it is. is it every, you know, a lot of people can fail for, fall for the usual trick of, well, their customers, um, they might not understand exactly what we're doing as a business mm. and I can gloss over this. You can't gloss over things. Not like anymore. That. You've really got to be genuine. You've got yeah. to be passionate about what you do. So I just, think that yeah. is a backdrop. Yeah. Just, it's not no, just it's passionate good. about what you do. I mean, uh, audience now and consumers want to know that you are giving back to the community, that mm. um, your brand message is more than just making money. 
Yeah. Um, so it's a big trend. It's, and it's, yeah, yeah. it's and a before, huge trend. Before that, like, it's not just giving back. It's also like being supportive of yeah. some sort of message or being out there in the community, even sustainability, green, being green, yeah. all green, all those kind of things. Uh, you know, we worked on a script recently and yeah. it's all about like being sustainable, solar panels on operational. It's just, it, it's just, it's not a cop out. It's just, it's making sure that you're fulfilling that extra need that, yeah. that people and audiences and society want. I could say right now that we've done so many videos this year and we have so many in production for next year already that are really around that brand story and brand awareness and that um, ethical sustainability behind the brand itself because yeah. uh, consumers don't care just about the price anymore or the flashy advertisement. They want you to humanize the brand. Mm. They want to know you're giving back yeah. and they want to know that your mission is bigger than that. And it's, if your brand's not doing that right now, you need to think about that. 2021, and you really, yeah. you need, really to, need to. This is all because of the Gen Y millennial. <laughs> 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 Yeah, it's, it's here whatever. we go. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, I think, Which I think as, it's amazing. as a consumer, it's a good, it's a good thing. Uh, they have really driven driven this agenda. Yeah. I mean, and you've got it. It's, but it's, it's work like that. It's really been, in terms yeah. of size mm. and, and, and prowess from a consumer point of view. The Gen Ys is now, you know, they're sort of, what are they, 30, 37 to, to 40 um, and yeah. sort of into their 20s. So you look at that in terms of consumer segment coming through and they're really focused on social responsibility and, and meaning, not just about just you yeah, know, buying meaning. a product or, or, or working for a business. It's got to have some sort of reason something yeah. a bit deeper with it mm. that, uh, it's identity way. and yeah. that's not even yeah. just for buying the product yeah. that's for working within the company yeah. as well yeah, exactly. which is why we've seen we've been doing videos that aren't only for uh the business to and not get, the external they're also the internal they're internals as they? well yeah, yeah, yeah. and i think um it's a really important thing that all brands should be looking at right now what do they really stand for? And if they are doing great things out there, I, I know it sounds a little, you know, sometimes like, oh, look at me doing great things, but your consumers want to know, your customers want to know that you're doing these and you should highlight those and really put them out there and make them more of your brand story. Yeah. Yeah. So as long as you're doing it in a genuine yeah, I think In a yeah, genuine, that's, not, that's not, what I'm saying. We chose a random charity to yeah. support. No, but a lot of yeah. people yeah. actually, we're taking, yeah. Uh, we're taking cables out of the box, you know, yeah. because yeah. it would be more- Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> But no, I, I think yeah. you're right there, Mike, because I think that um, we talk to our clients about if you, when, when you're putting out your social responsibility side, then be passionate about it. So don't just wander along the street and go, oh, radio, we're going to do this because that looks like the right thing to do. You've really got to get to what is it that resonates with your brand um, and what resonates with the audience that you're trying to talk to mm. um, and, and be passionate about that because the more that you as a business are passionate about it, the more that your audience will realize that this is genuine. Yeah. Um, and don't forget to tell the why. So if you are going to promote the fact that you are socially responsible, inform people why you are socially responsible and why you are passionate about this particular one, because then they will actually take that genuine nature and, and engage with it. Otherwise, that brings yeah. just a question, seen, actually. Yeah. Mm. Well, no, this fits perfectly. Yeah. The question is uh, from Mark. Is uh, do you, uh, is it, do you, does your organisation need a purpose uh, and to communicate that purpose? Is the purpose a new vision or mission? So on to Kristen's point is is the why? It yeah, should yeah. Be yeah. into your vision. It shouldn't be. This is very important. This is, and I, I've done years of corporate marketing as well. Yeah. And and it's the one thing that the, the biggest mistake that I've seen being made is that they go quick pick a random charity yeah. and then your customers go. Well, we get that you're trying to be good, but it doesn't feel right because yeah. it's not, it has to be part of your vision. So no, it's not about redefining your vision. It's about saying what aligns with our vision. And can I just clarify as well? It's not just going, we need to support a charity. It's like, we need to be more sustainable. Yeah. We need to look after our workforce. We need to provide work-life balance. It's and, and as a copywriter doing a lot of websites, one of the biggest pages now that we're seeing traffic on is the about us page. Yeah. Yep. And there's a reason for that. And it's, it's, it's that. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and convey it. But, and, and if you can articulate it well, then you, you actually, then you're doing the right thing because yeah. you know, you're passionate about it and um, just make sure that it's relevant to you as a business. And then 
um, relevant to your audience. Now, there's a lot of companies out there that will do social, socially responsible activities, which they don't need to communicate because they're relevant to the business. Mm -hmm. They're not necessarily relevant to the audience. The audience, you know, wants to consume stuff and they're interested. Final one is um, engage your employees in it. Yes. Because there is because... An important, it's not just about a top down. Yes. The, the employees are the ones that would drive the genuine nature. And then yes. if you're doing, as you talked about, there was, you're doing as many videos about the external for uh, products and services as you are about the internal. And when yeah. you can get um, employee stories around the social responsibility that, that a business is doing, that's just, you know, you, you don't need to market after yeah. that. I mean, those are your own yeah. influencers uh, in general when you mm. have your whole. Um, all your employees on board and really believing in your message yeah. and what you're putting out there. Yep. So to sum up, social responsibility, anyone? It's, it's, <laughs> it's like, no, no, it, it has to be, be, yeah. it has to be sure. done, it's getting bigger. Yeah, um, and make, make sure, sure it's relevant. relevant. Make sure it's also, it's not like it's new. No. It's yes. Like, okay, it's just a continuing growing trend. I mean, I've But it's becoming stuff pertinent. 15 mm -hmm. years ago, we did oh, a absolutely. research study on consumer social responsibility um, or corporate social responsibility. And uh, it wasn't that big back then. That was something that was, was a nice fairly, to have. Yeah, it was new. This is an interesting concept. Well, it used to be okay um, to have a policy, didn't it? And now it's yeah. now you've actually got to implement, implement what yeah. you're doing. Yeah, yeah, that's right. that, and that's the yeah. difference. And that is. Yeah. And you said that. And and I think you forget sometimes how smart customers are oh, yeah. and they Incredibly can tell intuitive. if you're yes. just doing it to tack on social responsibility mm -hmm. or if you truly believe in something. So if you're not doing anything yet, that's okay. Yeah. It's just yeah. that it's, okay. it's a good time. It's about to become the holidays. Really sit down and think, what aligns with our product? How can we better um, our employees with diversity or work-life balance? How can we be more sustainable with our products or services? And what is something that could be really meaningful to um, attach ourselves to that would really resonate with mm. myself, my customers, and my employees? And just, again, just like the automation, take it step by step. Start yes. with something small and Absolutely. work your way up as long as it's genuine. It will be very helpful for the next year. Our office is uh, RSPCA, New South Wales. <laughs> we love dogs. <laughs> Foster dogs everywhere in our office. <laughs> um, all right. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Good. Number yeah. three. So remote customers. This should come as no surprise. So to, to preface this is basically COVID happened. Everyone worked from home. We all thought, oh, my gosh. And then, especially in Australia, COVID subsided. Our restrictions lifted and people went, it's not too bad to work from home. Yeah, and, 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 not, and more importantly, it's not too bad to consume from yeah. home. And so that is what marketing must adapt to right now because what's happening is we're getting people that are very just buying online. From yeah. The they want shipping. I mean, I bought a pair of shoes from a brand recently that never has done shipping before. And I went online and was like, oh, if I go to the store. And then they went, no, we do shipping now. I was like, oh. Bye. Yeah. How convenient. Well, I it's mean, a, it's a yeah. now. It's mm. so exciting. And and in our world, what's really exciting about it, because you know, even yeah. doing the AR and VR now with your shopping experience, because not everyone's going mm. uh, in person. To store. And yep. they want their users to have that same experience as if they were in store. And really it can be an even more intimate, amazing experience. Seeing it, yeah, yeah. yeah. In VR AR, because mm. you can see it right in front of you you can put the shoes right on you you can have that full Thanks. intimate experience without ever leaving your household oh, absolutely. and um, i think the brands that are jumping on that yes. now are just going to see a massive benefit um in the new year the yeah. nice thing about video too because you get that um you get a better sense of the actual if you buy a product for instance you can actually see so much more about how it can be used how it can be used in actual situations it's not just you you see it on the shelf in the shop and you look and you go oh that could work all right i wonder how that might you know i'm trying to picture how that product works for me yeah but with video because yeah. you get online you can actually see someone actually using it yeah. and go that's perfect that's exactly yeah. what i need and uh so so from a shopping experience even though you miss out on that tangible being able to touch and feel it you with video you can actually experience the product so much more in what it can do for you mm. yeah so uh, look i think uh, from a branding perspective, this this is just it's beginning. Th this yep. is yeah, this is one of the best <laughs> things that's happened because now you can actually map your entire customer journey, um, and you can tailor that experience yeah. to the customer. So this is your, if, if you're yeah, wanting you haven't experience. mapped your customer journey yet mm. um, as a business, you need to go out there now and you really need to do this because 
the remote customer now, you know exactly from all the data, and we'll come on to big data at the, in, in a minute, but all the data that the likes of Mike's team can capture, you can do every single step and you can yeah. give them a customer experience. And the bit that you should not forget now, because this is a real opportunity, is the actual after digital experience. So if you're giving them a product, Everyone. you now control the wow factor yeah. when they receive that product. So you know, you can determine how they open it. You can yeah. determine what, what fun and joy they get from just lifting up that box and going, wow, I've just gotten a delivery from a shoe company that never, mm -hmm. but now there's a little card in there. Yeah. And so they come from being Scented. just a cut. <laughs> yeah, but, but all of this now. So previously when it was in a store, it was a lot more generic and yeah, they've just picked it off. Yeah. And it was more about how does our store look and we've given you a nice box, but now you've got control of that whole environment and you can really sensationalize it. And so it's definitely growing. Yeah. Like everyone so, listen to this. This yeah, is, a, this big, yeah. this this is a big trend. Because yeah. it, it's like so one of my friends said to me recently, he said, the business, the, the business world was heading this way anyway, but but 2020 slingshot off, yeah, you know, yeah. it, 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 10 years quickly, you know, like as in yeah. people sort of went, all right, we're working from home, it's mm. normal, rather than like that gradual transition. And I think businesses are caught in the lurch because we're kind of like, oh, Ooh. everyone's there, like we yeah. need to jump on it. And so we need to be really considering this at the moment is like, um, how are we going to deliver digital remote experiences? I like think that? so, yeah. yeah. And don't forget physical. Yeah, as I was yeah. saying and before, don't forget the physical yeah. side. For a lot of businesses, it's really that blend now. Mm. So mm -hmm. with a lot of shops and stuff that are sort of reopening, um, they still have their e-commerce and it's still a big part of their business. So they, they had to adapt, set up an e-commerce shop. We, had, yeah. we were sort of inundated with people wanting e-commerce shops as they adapted their businesses. Um, and now you still have that blend. So they're still making mm. sales online, but they're also making sales in store. So I think you'll see a lot more of that sort of hybrid model now with a mm. lot of businesses where you go, I've got to do a combination. Well, we're yeah. seeing with, um, you know, we've been doing so much more video around product because they want that almost salesperson experience of going through the whole entire product and understanding the product. And we create different videos based on uh, where, we're, where we're at in the uh. funnel. If they're a new customer, it's more about that brand awareness and that more mm. excitability of the product. But if they're further down the line, they want the specs. They want the know-how. They really want to get into <laughs> it, right? Um, but we're finding even now if they're going to store, they're still watching the video. So oh, yeah. it's awesome. actually yeah. um, combining both of them, uh, but it's still heading towards that way. And they're now expecting that video to help them make that assistance, mm. even if they go into the physical See, space. See, that's that tailoring the customer journey that I yeah. talked about at the mm. outset. I think, this is, I, I think this is a real opportunity coming. The other one I would say with, with this is that um, what it has resulted in is a real amp up in the amount of noise that's coming through the digital media channels. Yes. So it does mean that you have to remain a bit fresh and you've, you've, you can't just rely on what you did before. Yeah, actually you do need to, point. yeah. Cause that's yeah. what's happening is people are kind of Frankensteining it. It <laughs> means like they're kind of going, okay, this was our model. Let's mm. make it, let's <laughs> yeah. and, and it's actually, um, I was working with a client the other day and he had started the business this year and he was like, everyone went digital this year, but I just started with digital. And so his model, and I know that's not everyone, really but his yeah. was ready to go, right? But yeah. that doesn't mean that, I mean, he puts in an advantage, but it doesn't mean that you can't. Like, you know, yeah. it, it just means that you need to rethink things. Yeah, you need and, to and apply say, a bit of thought to it. Absolutely. Yeah, and it's not yeah. just products. Let's let's be clarified, let's clarify that as well. It's yeah. also services, yes. like, uh, like Ariel was saying, AR, VR, but also like I've seen it in real estate and I've seen it in a lot of different service-based industries where they're going, okay, people don't want to come to the home, for example. They want to experience it remotely how can we do that how can we enable that how can we enable uh, auctions online from wherever they are in australia yeah. all those kind of things are now not only just expected they're demanded yeah you know and it's not it's like oh i can't bid well then i'm not going to yeah. participate right. video tours again are going to keep happening now from here on out now it's just yep. going to be an expectation yep. it doesn't even matter if things go completely back um to how it was there is no how it was it is now something that consumers are going to expect yeah, I think you captured service. it well, Chris, yeah. that slingshot. We've accelerated. Mm. So 2020 is, has probably it's jumped sort of us went. about three or four years in advance yeah, now. Has. And so companies are now having to catch up with that. Yeah. And they, they really... And customers already have. This They've moved on. Like customers yeah. are there. Yeah. That's it. I mean, because if you look at the, the convenience factor that you get out of using, you know, doing remote, even remote sales and conversations and stuff, 
instead of what we find where we used to have to get in the car and drive for two hours to then have a meeting with someone, they're like, why, why would you bother why? doing that? Zoom. Like, I'm not interested <laughs> in that. Yeah. So it happened to me recently. Yeah. Like, I just expected the meeting to be on Zoom yeah. and they were like, where are you? And I'm like, oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is so you, Chris. But, but, but that, that just showed like um, the, the kind of conversation, uh, the expectations. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I felt silly, but <laughs> but, it, but that's the kind of it means fun. that we've, we've, we're able to now embrace that. Convenience. we all knew yeah. it was there before. You, you, you no one really do did a little bit of a zoom here yeah. and there, and you think this is so convenient, so helpful. I wish more people would do that, but it was all yeah, but... resistance. <laughs> then all of a sudden, it's like everyone's doing yep. it. So hopefully, we see that trend continue where it, you know, wherever we can, why not embrace that? Yeah. Uh, so thumb up is. I think this is probably the biggest one. Yeah. It's like that just saying, we just uncovered that. Yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. But of all these trends, some of the ones we discussed already, they've already been there. Yeah. But now yeah. this, this one's one is new. Like big, it's it's hitting. It's not going anywhere. Um, use it to your advantage. Yeah. This yeah. is your real opportunity yeah. to, con to really manage that customer experience and that customer journey. So spend time if you're starting Especially your marketing plan December, now. December, January. Revisit yeah. all yeah. your customer journeys, tailor them to spe specific audiences and, and map how it's going to go yes. through. I think the two things that I sort of look at is one, it's amazing in terms of as an enabler, it removes that geographic barrier that you mm. had to have mm. that, that sort of physical presence. Acceptably which removes. Is, which is, yeah. yeah, which is awesome for, for um, opportunities for business. But at the same time, to Kristen's point before, it uh, it opens up a lot more competition. Yeah. Yes. And so that's going to be a lot more noise. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everyone's yeah. going to have to be a bit more focused yeah. on making sure Absolutely. that they're standing out. And I would yeah. say, lead the conversation. Yes. That's a big yeah. thing yeah. I always say is lead the conversation. Yeah. All good. Which, yeah. which is perfect lead on to number four, which is data driven marketing. Oh, now, this Mike. is. <laughs> <laughs> Mike. Bring it home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, long story short, is look, we, we, data has been around for a long time, but yeah. I read a study recently that it's almost it's more valuable than goals, right? And especially 2021, they said it's going to be really, really precious. Mm. Um, and so, we'll get into the ethics side of that in a few slides, but let's talk about the potential and data driven marketing. So, carry away. <laughs> where, where <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's see, where's that soapbox? Um, look, Gentle, easy. Yeah. <laughs> look, it, it, in essence, the, the nice thing about data-driven marketing is that you're actually, you're making decisions based on facts yep. Yep. at the end of the day. So while traditionally in terms of marketing, you kind of, you were sort of having a bit of a guess at what you were doing. You sort of knew based on science and theory about how it should work, that that's what we, we should do, but you were never quite sure, even down to looking at, you know, whether it's even a, a, a TV or, uh, or radio, and you sort of had these audiences that were done through polling and stuff, and you sort of thought, okay, well, we're talking to an audience of, 80,000 or 300,000 people or whoever. And you think, okay, yeah, but how many people are actually listening to this? Mm -hmm. you, you know, there's a huge disconnect there. Um, whereas now we can tell right down to the, the absolute finite, hey, that person, not only how many people watched the video, but to how far through the video they, they watched. watched. What yeah. part yeah. they skipped in the yeah. video? Yeah. <laughs> and did they make it to the end? So that to me is, is amazing in terms of the power and um, just the opportunity for improving things with everything that we do because we're actually seeing what's really going on. Oh my gosh, so much. I can't tell you how many times when I start with a new client and we're gonna be starting a new product campaign and I see a lot of their old videos and I go, great, can you give me the data behind how these videos did? Were people watching through? What kind of audience, you know, what was da 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 da? Which platforms uh, went better with which, you know, durations? They go, oh. Oh, we don't have any of that. Yeah. <laughs> I get told and, all the time, um, like it, what wage pages work, yeah. what, yeah. what messaging has worked. Right, know. right there. And then this is another thing we talked about. If you're a smaller media, even a large business, you could save multiple different people's jobs just by actually getting this data yeah. and uh, capitalizing on it, using it. and using it um, to have a just so much more solid well campaign and well-informed well campaign mm -hmm. moving forward so if you're not at the moment capturing this data which most platforms just do YouTube for gives you, it you. Yeah, facebook the gives it to you they all a lot of them you know, so you now. there's it. probably there potentially people out there that are saying well where do i get it from yeah mm. actually the, the reality is the platforms you're using already yeah. most of them already capture it for you and yeah. do it it's really accessible um, like so it's more about and then the, the the real challenge with data is how to interpret it and then how to use it. Now, 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. I, mean, like, I feel the heat yeah. right yeah, now. Like, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, you're quite right. It's basically what you do with that information because there's plenty of it out there. The yeah. data is, is so rich in all those different platforms. Um, one of the key tricks that we sort of, because we use Google you know, or G Suite or now Google Workplace, um, one of the great tools that they have is Data Studio. Yeah. Uh, and that's a fantastic really? tool. <laughs> <laughs> just, okay, there you go. You get, you get, you get free access to it as, a, as part of the software. Um, and the nice thing about it is that you can pull in all your Google Analytics information. And if you use a few, um, there's a, like super metrics and stuff, which allows you to pull in the data from Facebook and stuff. Um, it means that you can actually create dashboard reports or simple reports that give you all the information uh, in a nice, easy to, to sort of digest manner. Um, we just went through this literally today in our team where we have these huge sort of 20 page reports that talks about all the different channels and stuff. Um, and in one of the recent customer interviews that I did just to sort of get some feedback about how we're going, uh, he said, look, I, I like what you guys are doing. It's really interesting. You've got these great reports. And he said, you know, honestly, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> 20 pages of things. Yeah, like, I'm, yeah. like, I'm never going to read it. Honestly, Your team would have been all crushed. I want, <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> like, all I want is one page. Shows me a bunch of numbers yeah, that really says that everything's dashboard. going well. Green light, green light, green light, yeah. red light. What's going on there? Tell me what the answer is. Okay, cool. Mm. So to your point, Kristen, around, you know, knowing not just having the data, but what does it mean? What are the insights that we can derive from it? That's the critical stuff. And yeah. with some of the, the, the amazing tools and stuff that are out there now, you can ask the question, the information's there. And then with that information, it allows you to make very clear decisions yes. that are moving things in the right way. And that's what I love from a marketing point of view, because then we can look at what channels are we supposed to be putting our, our money towards? And we go, well, that's the one there that's got the best return. Uh, there's also, we're not actually capping it out in terms of mm. what's potentially possible. Great, let's do a lot more in that area and don't worry about the rest of the yeah. stuff. Yeah. See, I think it, what, what I really enjoy about data is, as Chris said before, I think when you opened up, you kind of said, we, there used to be a lot of guesswork in our game. It used to be, mm. look, we, here's, here's how we're going to do this, this marketing campaign. This is the messaging we're going to put out. These are the visuals we're going to put out and we're going to use this media. With, with the way that digital media operates now, you can actually, it's, sorry, backtrack a bit, you used to have to go, right, we're going to use where we'll do all these concepts, but we're going to go with concept A. Yeah. We yeah. run it and then we'd all hold our breath <laughs> as concept A went out there and then we'd see, you know, whether what type of return it got and how well it was received. Whereas with digital media now, you can actually go, we're going to go with concept A, B, C and D. And we're actually going to let the market decide which what one works. is more interactive. Like testings and stuff, yeah. yeah. Now, for all of us, that's a great thing because that means more activity, more work. Um, but for the customers, they, they still need to realise that every time you do an A, B, C and D, you do actually have to create a whole new journey that goes through there. Yeah. You do have to yeah. think about what so is the different. A... So th there is a bit like that. So don't just all of a sudden go, right, this is so cool. I can test everything because you can test everything, but it'll take you a year to test everything. Yeah. And what you really want is to narrow that field down and still be quite succinct and just be testing the A and B or the C, not testing everything because yeah. you're just trying to determine. So you're um, saying there's a bit of intuition to Yeah, you've start. still you've That's, still got it. Yeah. I yeah. like that. Because there's a lot yeah. of work that goes behind. Every time you yeah. you think about it, you, you even with the automation that we had, if you if you um, put a customer journey in there and you've got five different critical decision points, you've got to have some sort of content that drives off that decision point. Yeah. So if you put in 20 decision points, you've got to have 20 yeah. pieces of, and then they've got to go through a different journey. So think about the, you know, time spent yeah. and um, not versus about return. Yeah. All those different ones. It's about learning from that campaign. Exactly. That you just did. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of times, mm. even once a campaign's finished, that's really the time you can go, okay, this is how it did. This is how we're feeling. And this is how we're going to update it next time. Yeah. Um, where before you were just saying, it did good or yeah, that. exactly um so just utilizing it even in that way if you don't want to or don't have the time to do a more than a couple journeys um you can yeah, still just, utilize you can still get loads stuff. of great information yes, exactly. out of it so and uh, as i said there's there's a plethora out there yeah you, yeah you don't have to go and get a newfangled app no, start for small. It because it's already there most of it yeah. but what you what the, and this is one of the challenges that we've observed with a lot of customers is they will know it's there, but they don't necessarily how to interpret it. And this for is fear, where look fear takes for fear, right? and yeah. but it's time as well, Chris. Yeah. And that is where, you know, if there's going to be a complete blatant 
plug, plug. for someone. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you need someone like this guy. <laughs> Um, oddball to really like, do that yeah no <laughs> it, it is because that's this is where one of those ones in our in our whole marketing field where you do need people that understand the data that are analytical that are like specialized yeah. in because it. Yeah. it is yeah. it's a specialization it's right as, and as it's simple as that but you can't remain naive is your point yeah you can't you yeah. can't just go look i know there's data there we could be making better informed yeah decisions. but we'll just I'm, leave it there. <laughs> the intuition blend that was interesting yeah. Yeah. I, I think yeah. that we we came to something there where it's like there's automation but that like mike was saying there's so much of it there and so many options that you need to still as a marketer think okay how do we use that information that informative to yeah to find what we could do and make it practical yeah, yeah. i think that's a nice blend so to yeah. sum up i think we might move on in a yeah, second everyone let mike sum that one yeah <laughs> well i think spent... 2021 in perspective in, in, of 2020 yeah, yeah good point yeah. data is it's only gonna get bigger yeah you know the, the use of data and how we make decisions it just it, it, because we can track so much and we will continue to be able to track more and more um although there are some privacy situations kind of coming up to, which, yeah. yeah which may change things in the future but at the moment we have so much information that we can kind of work with it so it's brilliant the key thing that i sort of look at and and sort of recommend to everyone is that when you look at your data um just be careful about what data you're capturing and how you're utilizing it because quite often we get uh, clients sort of looking at the vanity metrics and kind of going, oh, I'm getting impressions or shares clicks or, and all yeah, clicks yeah, yeah. and that sort of stuff. And you go, oh, isn't that amazing? Yeah, it, it, it's nice. But at the end of the day, what we've got to do is break that down into actual sales. Insights. So how's yeah. it going through that funnel and saying, well, okay, it's nice that we've got that, but is that then translating to sales down, down, yeah. down the end? Because yeah. if it isn't, then it's, okay, great. So you've got a thousand likes or a thousand shares. <laughs> So what? You yes. see that, so that yes. actually do for you. Yeah. So that's the danger with lots of data. You look at it and go, oh, wow, look at this huge numbers here, huge numbers there. We've got growth. It's triple, you know, triple digits and stuff. This is amazing. Still no dollars. Hitting yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Is it actually generating more? Business? And it happens on yeah. a lot of social media platforms. So Yeah, I yeah. mean, yeah, well, because the social media platforms, let's be honest, they're geared to get you to spend more money on ads. Yeah. So they give you the key metrics and that get is. you mm. to spend more money yeah. on ads. So it's like how many impressions, how many clicks, so the, the, and you can't blame them for doing that. They're running a business at the end yeah. of the day. But as so you say, you. Mike, yeah, and so you need to, yeah, yeah, yeah. Need to make so smart you. decisions, you, you've right? You've got to make the smart decision, yeah. and you've got to really get cut through that into how's this adding value to my business. But yeah, that's, all right, that is good. Well, yeah. Great, good one. All right. <laughs> um, so uh, all good with questions so far. I think we'll move straight to number five, which is the growth <laughs> of video. Now, before, before <laughs> yeah, thanks, um, so we'll just preface that with we've, we're all very familiar with video. Okay, yeah. and video is obviously taking the world by storm, and it's it's been around for a while and it's growing. But the thing is, is where it's growing that I think yeah. is the most important part of the 2021 aspect. Because I think we can say videos are given Oh, now. It, absolutely given. 2020, on your website, 2019 uh, was a breakthrough. All good. Um, but, yeah, so um, on the website and, and everything like that, it's it's a given, you have to have it. The reason why it's because it makes your brand more personal, interactive, et cetera. However, it's where it's growing. And so we're going to jump on like TikTok and all these kind of things. But Errol, do you want to start the conversation? And yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think this is like a lot of things we're talking about there's so many more platforms coming out there's mm. so many ways to put video out there and i know it can be really overwhelming yeah. to brands i hear that all the time yeah. so overwhelming um because yeah TikTok is in australia they've been doing a big push around advertisement on TikTok. Yep. there's multiple different ways to advertise on TikTok. you still have facebook you have instagram you have linkedin and twitter. there's twitch twitter. there's Just twitter see, twitter is doing a big push right now mm. video, they came out of the woodwork yeah, video. Kind of, they're just just recently, and they're running all these training, free training, and all that for Twitter for video for Australia. Yeah. Wow. So I, I I don't know. We're not big here, but it's mm. it's. it's well, they're thing. saying seventy five percent of data is going to be through video mm. in the new year. So I mean, platforms are saying, how can I make sure that people are putting that video on mm. my platform? Yeah. And how can we get the most engagement and get that um, all that through? yeah the the social platform that they're working on yeah. um 
some of those new ones we're talking about, you've gotten on TikTok I recently. Did. <laughs> um, I did. And it's, it's funny, like the dancing, like my silly one is a test, I'm embarrassed to say, but d- dancing on a Friday, that did really, really well, but yeah. probably damaged my rest. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, this is the thing, rest. okay, so this is the thing platform. with, yeah, mm. TikTok particularly, you know, let's take TikTok, it's a different platform. It and is. and I think if you, try and, if you try and approach the TikTok platform with your other social and digital media uh, persona, yeah. You're, yeah. not gonna, you're not going to. You're not Which is what it. I'm testing. Yeah. So we're doing, it, we're doing yeah. tests. It is, it is a younger crowd mainly. It's, you know, anywhere between 13 and 25. It's kind of the main yeah. audience members. And you, this is the one where you can kind of put the same video on Facebook or LinkedIn mm. and you can get away with it. You cannot for TikTok. No, no. You need to really fit into the persona of TikTok. And if you do want to go down the TikTok route, um, it is something I would actually say you need to go probably to a professional or have someone on your team who really understands it or takes the time yes. to really get to know TikTok because yeah. um, there's multiple ways you can advertise on there. Um, they have the full brand awareness ads where it takes over your TikTok when you first log on and that's all you see and you can click through. Yeah. Um, you can do these really fun hashtag challenges um, where they can They're start the viral a hashtag ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. become more Hashtag viral. try and do this dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. and they, they go yeah. the No, I know. Yeah. If you hit it, if you nail it, yeah. they go. And it's and it's really important, like like you were saying earlier. Yeah. It's also, but it's also there's like Instagram Reels that is now yeah. copy. There's yeah. the shoppable videos as well on Instagram, mm. which are amazing for products and services because you can watch the video and go right on there and get the product that you're seeing in the video. Um, Has everyone seen that? Like everyone, so people who have here, that's like a what do they what do they call it? Micro interactions, like, and it's where the video plays, and you yeah. can go, I like that product, and you pause the video, yeah, and, it, and it and you click, and it says, this is where to buy it. Yes. That that is pretty cool. Changing everything. And, and yeah. YouTube, I saw, is doing it now. Too. Yes. A YouTube lot of. has a banner. Sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. Yes. No, it's Not exciting. Like, shut up, Chris. <laughs> no, 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 please. I, that's what's so exciting about yeah. it is it's becoming more prevalent. And, you know, we do talk about there's so many different platforms out there. I really say take the time to educate yourself mm. and see all these different videos that are coming out and all the different applications of them yeah. and really look at your audience. And this yeah. is that's where the key Chris one with really TikTok as well, I think. Yes. Yeah. It is what's so the point? important. Yeah. It, you need to know who your audience is. Um, yes. who's going to be start looking. there because yeah. so, TikTok look audience. TikTok's audience will probably oh, move but at the moment moving. as you said 13 to 25 so if your if your audience your customer base that you're targeting is not in that not in that range at all like if you're selling nursing homes for, exi- for example yep. is there any point using TikTok at this stage yeah, probably not well, I mean, you know not unless you not unless you got a really long game you know <laughs> we thought, we said this about instagram but it doesn't I remember mean a couple of years ago yeah, yeah but remember, that's that's where the audience might yeah, yeah, the audience evolve, and it, it's might already evolve. evolving yeah, yeah. It's, it's a huge actual joke on tiktok right now of all the over 30s yeah. because oh. it was all a joke before covid Oops. everyone was like <laughs> i don't know whereas you know it's like oh not tiktok that's a you know gen z uh, situation and then it's all the you know over 30s crazy. coming out so it's already you know getting a more larger so it could change audience. rapidly I've yeah. already it done could the... change rapidly yeah. but it's oh, i was ended by the line <laughs> 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 But yeah, we've actually, there's been a lot of success for small businesses on TikTok Mm, because they're able to have that real raw experience of the business and it's going viral and it's giving smaller businesses that would never have that same opportunity on other websites to really get their product and services and who they are out there. Um, So it can be a genuinely amazing way to get uh, what you do out there. I think one of the reasons it works so well is because you're not just engaging an audience, they're participating. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's why TikTok works. It's kind of like, you're not just saying, here, look at me, do the chicken dance. It's like, (laughs) then you do the chicken dance and send the video back and show me you can do better. And that's, you know, so if their demographic changes in terms of how it evolves, TikTok, wow. That but then just in be... saying that, the copies, what about the copy, like so yeah, Instagram yeah. Reels and, yeah. and YouTube yeah. Yeah, see, are they, it, they, they have it. that audience yeah. ready. Exactly. And they're using exactly. that kind of, yeah. co- it's not as popular yeah. and it's sort of people are seeing it as a copy, but it, it's the same time. It's, well, but yeah. that's where you really need to consider your persona. 
Yeah, so this who is are all you going to be? If you've persona. already got an Instagram persona and you've already built and invested a lot of time to develop your brand identity within yeah. Instagram, if you all of a sudden jump to a TikTok persona because you're using Reels, yeah, it's just big question mark. So yeah, yeah you really just got to think that, and that's where data can help. Mike, you know, okay. you can Poor Mike, give, you, give him a link. No, no, no. Oh, I, yeah. 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 From, a, from a video point of view, yeah. though, I mean, what do you recommend? Do you, do, should be people be doing full, you know, high quality production sort of stuff? Should they be doing, you know, on their oh iPhone? Oh my gosh. I, I know everyone hates this phrase, but it's like, trend? how long is a piece of string? Mm -hmm. yeah. It really depends on who you are as a brand, what you're selling, what service you're putting out there. I've seen a few, um, they're, you know, people are doing bath bombs and they're having so much fun on there and it can be all iPhone based, but then, um, HP are doing TikTok ads at the moment. And you can tell they're very high quality ads, but they've put a lot of color in it and vibrancy yeah. and fun. So it makes you want to watch it and it has the quality of the brand that you know and you expect mm. from them. Yep. So it just depends on who they are and what kind of ad uh, you're putting out there. And I would say that on most platforms, um, I think because of this whole remote uh, experience, people are more okay with you having um, less professional videos for yeah. certain personal messages. Do you think However, that's going to continue though? I mean, like the, as we've been bombarded more and more by video, video is just becoming the norm. Yeah. It, it, do you think the audience is going to continue to say, okay, random, mm -hmm. random person with iPhone promoting their service. Look, it's funny, but are they going to, because no, you're going to get a lot yeah. of those. They're, they're expecting, actually, they're saying for the trend for the new years, expecting more from everyone yeah. they do expect yeah. better quality and they expect more creativity and they actually expect it to be more bespoke so and i think for most brands if you put a certain persona of who you are out there and your brand identity yeah. on your website and content and whatnot you need to also relay that yeah. in the video the content, content you're putting yeah. out there because brand trust is your number one most important things you can do. So if you just start throwing out their sketchy, cheap looking videos, it's gonna completely unalign with who you've put out there as a brand, which can actually ruin your reputation. There's a question Set here. Me there. So this, is, <laughs> this is a long one. Okay, so give me a sec. It's by David. Okay. I was wondering if you guys anticipated the growth of TikTok and its impact on marketing. Will the increasing trend be something all businesses could hop on uh, onto both larger and small? Another trend that I've noticed as a TikTok user, some TikTok profiles are specifically reviewing businesses such as restaurants. I have seen that. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think small businesses can utilize these profiles? Okay. <laughs> so it's a lot. Uh, so there was, the start was- uh, Did we see it? Anticipated the growth yes. of TikTok. I, I personally did. I, I, and the yes. reason why I say it is because I saw Instagram. And I saw that everyone laughed, every business laughed at it, right? And every business was like, oh, Instagram's like you take food, a photo of your popcorn, right? And then businesses started to get on it. And now look at it. It's a hugely yeah. business oriented platform, right? And yeah. when TikTok came out, I remember I was teaching marketing classes and everyone laughed at me then. And I was like, guys, we saw what happened to Instagram. It's highly likely. And I think we're just at the start. I, I feel like we're not even close to that. Um, I'm excited about how it's going to evolve. Oh, so how's it change. going to get? So, I'm, so take me Instagram for now. instance. I'm way. I'm not in their demographic, and I I don't pick up personal use TikTok. How how will TikTok evolve? So you know when we sit here and do this next year. Oh yeah. Will I be sitting there going? But I well, I'm now <laughs> doing those. Ones. I, I, do, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do believe though, if but because that's realm, the exciting thing. Yeah. And it, where's it gonna? You know, will they do it? You and know, I get yeah. that, but I do think oh, if it's in the realm, the audience is in the realm of something that you're after. This is the moment. Yeah, to jump exactly. In on it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't be an early. Don't to, be afraid of being an early adopter. Don't be afraid to be an early adopter. And if if it is, if you are after that market and you're okay having that mm. fresh authentic feel and having some yeah. fun with your marketing it is the time to it get is on yeah, it. yeah i'd agree with so that. i would so definitely people, say yeah, yeah yeah and the second part of that question oh sorry go on no no was, oh yeah, yeah. the second part of the question was um uh, there's a trend right now and it started off as a bit of a troll, right? Where uh, uh, the profiles were reviewing businesses such as restaurants, right? And they were going, oh, I don't like this celebrity or I don't like that person. Um, but do you think that businesses can utilize these profiles? So I think what David's trying to say is that um, influencers, in, like uh, as in, yeah, right? And we are getting to influencers. We are going to get into but, but it's a good yeah. question yeah. because mm. TikTok is 
developing those, you know, is it Charlie D'Amelio and all those kind of profiles that are, yeah. that are going really well on there and they are coming across as genuine. Um, will businesses hop onto that and either ruin it, take advantage of it, use it? Of, like, Well, yes, of course. Yes, yes, yes of course. Of course. Yes. Of course. Um, yes that's, just, that's what yes. happens to every single platform. Um, but that's what we're talking about, being an early adopter. Mm. Right now, I would say on Instagram, you can see the influencer marketing so intensely that it's put a lot of people off where TikTok is more authentic at the moment. And I think mm. even as they're integrating with brands, it's seeming to be okay with the audience. Yep. Because moment, yeah. at the moment, so if you are going to do it, an early yeah. adopter of it, um, because brands are going to take advantage of it. So mm. you might as well be one of them. Oh, the end um, is oh. <laughs> <laughs> So if you're doing a 2021 marketing plan, this could be your outlier, couldn't it? Yeah. It could be, look, we, yeah. you know, we are going to. Explore. You, yeah, we're going to explore I, TikTok I'm because right now. Yeah. I'm just exploring it right now. I just thought it's worth yeah. giving it a go. We did. Yeah. We did. Uh, this is sorry, a little left field, but we were talking about Twitch. Um, we're going to. Privately. We're going to talk. Okay, about sorry, yeah, yeah. but that's it for influence. Oh, we'll talk about influence. Sorry, yeah, but yeah. Um, that's the same thing, but with a fully male audience. You mm. know, so if that's more of that male centric that you need, then that's how you use the influence. The only it. thing I will say from a, an approach for businesses, um, it's good to sort of get into that. And if you see it as being a really cool sort of audience that you want to talk to, great. Um, the only caution I always say to people is that if you're doing everything else and all the rest of your marketing is working for you and you're looking at other avenues you can implement, then great. Makes sense to make the move into it and, and to explore it and look at the opportunities. Um, but what I often see uh, where, where businesses make mistake is they, they start jumping into this sort of stuff. Uh, so in particular um, TikTok and stuff where they're not doing anything else, right? They're not doing well in Facebook and, and doing a great job. They're not doing Instagram. Yeah. They're not getting their email marketing and automations. All these other things that work really well. Um, that that are proven. That are targeted. Absolutely. They're trying to jump on the new thing. <laughs> that are on brand. Actually, yeah, some yeah, really yeah. solid marketing yeah. strategies you can be implementing that's a very now. Smart that, insight. So, yeah, so that's what I meant by the outlier. So, like, no, yeah. Like, yeah, I would yeah, agree like the, with that. Yeah. Uh, the only reason I'm jumping on TikTok is because I'm getting really good results from my other platforms, other platforms. right? Yeah. I think like, Mike's yeah. nailed it. It would be yeah. dangerous Absolutely. to just go, let's give it a, because it's uncharted territory, yes. right? And and you're maybe putting your business a little bit at risk trying to try new things when when there's yeah, a lot of solid else. stuff yeah, that yeah. for you. Yeah. But you've got to get that right. Um, so I think I think we well, that we're leading to the next one. Is everyone? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? yeah. So this is this is social. the new social, which is uh, we've got WeChat, um, WhatsApp is becoming big. Google My Business is here, but yeah, getting so huge. Getting, yeah. uh, and we talked about Twitch. Yeah. Um, so I think like we've talked we, about Google My Business a few times. Yeah. So well, let's just uh, do it quickly. Yeah. Uh, I think that Google My Business is huge. Mm. The reason why is because Google is supporting it, and yeah. I think that what people underestimate. It hard. The people underestimate the fact that it is um, like it, it's a social media platform. Like yeah. I think it's not in the traditional sense where it's like this full interactive platform, but um, like I post content on there every day and and it gets a lot of leads and a lot of likes and things. And so I think people are not thinking of it as a social media platform, but thinking it as a mapping system. Yeah. yeah. And it's actually quite an active social media platform. So I, don't, I we won't spend time on this because I know- Well, it's, it's a quiet that. warrior. It's one that you don't <laughs> really- you don't really think. Quiet warrior. Well, well done. That's a cracker. <laughs> just pulled out of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> but yes. Yeah. It is. So it's just something that, you know, you think, oh, you just set it over there. But really, if that's something that you start putting an actual plan behind, yeah. you can that's, really make no, it no, massive. Businesses aren't making market. the most out of their yeah. of my business. Uh, they are doing an incredible disservice yep. to themselves. Yeah. You're talking about a free platform. Free, very active, utilize. highly pushed. Yep. SEO benefits by yeah, yeah. optimizing it. Um, yes, you're right. From a post point of view, and depending on how you use the post, mm. um, can be very effective. One from a not so much from a ranking point of view, although it shows great activity on the on the actual listing. Yeah. Um, the impact though that we see when we implement a, a, like when we work with a, a client on SEO, the one of the very first things we'll do is make sure that their Google My Business is optimized. Yeah, and that will see the most significant results the quickest yeah so that's absolutely a must you, for everybody. so please do you want to just take yeah well do you want to just take the few things that maybe right now after um this panel that they could just jump in and change that would make a big difference most importantly is one yeah make sure make sure you've got control of your um your google my business and that you can actually edit it um make sure it's verified uh most importantly make sure you've got the right category set up 
So, so as long as you're in the right category, and they do change those categories on a regular basis. So it is worthwhile sort of every six months just to go back and check and make sure that, hey, you're still in the right category mm -hmm. because that will have certain keywords in there that you'll then rank for. And if you're not in the right category, mm. you're going to miss out on a huge amount of business. Mm. Yeah. Um, so will everyone okay with that one? Yeah, yeah, so that's... the other ones are WeChat, WhatsApp, uh, and Twitch. Now these are fairly, they're not, Controversial is the wrong word, just different. They're mm -hmm. a different kind of approach. Like, for example, uh, with WeChat and WhatsApp, they're very conversational based. Oh, yeah. um, and, and a lot of businesses get overwhelmed with them because while there is the advantage of conversation and direct conversation, that's also the disadvantage. Exactly. <laughs> because it's kind of like, oh, wow, like you've got a direct channel. Um, and you've I, got to uh, yeah. manage that direct channel. And that's the thing. So yeah. there's a huge advantage if it's used really well, like in a group chat. Like I yeah. know we, uh, uh, WeChat and WhatsApp does group chat similar to say mm. Facebook does, but a bit more of a scalable thing. And people are more, they prefer it, I find, rather yeah. than Facebook chat. I mean, WeChat's um, so much more than that. Oh, 100%, I, like I, the payment yeah. systems and all that. But I'm yeah. saying like, it's just, where where is this headed? This is a big area. Um, and I think that we need to, like businesses need to be thinking, okay, where do we need to be? Like, especially um, uh, WhatsApp. I feel like that's yeah, exploded it's, quite it's rapidly. Gonna, yeah, it's and gonna it's, get bigger. Was it purchased by Facebook? Did someone say was someone purchased it or so it's been take it's been acquired. <laughs> yeah. And so and so it's it's becoming a big thing. Yeah. Um and the other one was Twitch. This is a bit like you were saying, Ariel, is that it it started off from the gaming culture mm -hmm. where it was live streaming of gaming and, and all that. And like all other social media platforms, it has grown quite rapidly and we've moved and it's becoming now streaming sports. And it's become like a, the spectator yeah. kind of, uh, kind of social media platform. And so these are fairly new revelations and it's, it's an area where I feel like brands, especially if your product or service suits this, yeah, it's absolutely. something you should be embracing. Particularly something like if you have Twitch, a male dominated, yeah. Product or, 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 you're, or you're supplying into the gaming industry. Well, of course. Gaming like, industry, live events, be there. Yeah. It, it's sports. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of different things. That, and, and I think that it's one of those things where it's only going to get bigger. Yeah. yeah. You know, like as I know YouTube has that streaming thing right now, but who knows? Yeah. Like it might be that Twitch become, gets its whole, like it's got a big million base, right? Yeah. And, it, and it might, they might go, you know what? We're going to make streaming more accessible to movies. Uh, or, or, and things like that. And that's so. what I was saying with the influencer marketing with Twitch, it's still fairly, you know, it's, are, it's still okay. a place where you can jump in on that. Um, because a lot of these Twitch users were just kind of everyday people that really like to share playing Animal Crossing. Yeah. Yeah. And then all of a sudden a brand comes along and says, I'm going to get you all these things and, and they get excited and they want to mm. share it. And they're genuinely excited about sharing it with, uh, the people who watch their content. Um, so, and there's, you can actually partner with Twitch to do um, marketing campaigns. Um, so there's, I think, um, we're talking about Animal Crossing, Wendy, uh, Wendy's, the fast food brand. Oh yeah. They actually had a Wendy's character who, and they would play, you know, on there and people could watch it and she would go through Animal Crossing, but they always had an ad on the side saying free delivery. Um, but <laughs> they had fun with it, you know, and it was very much in line with Twitch um, or, you know, computer, uh, computer building companies that could actually build a computer and play the games on it and show how well it works oh, on the computer. Stream just, the building. Exactly. Process. There you go. There's like, so many amazing ways. You yeah. Can it's quite it. an interview space. Yeah. yeah. I think, um, look, it, yeah, let, let's lot, say not overwhelm people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot coming on that, but I would say that, as Mike was iterating before, um, exhaust the potential of the existing mainstream mm -hmm. before you leap into something. Yeah, necessary. agreed. And it's it, the, this panel. But that's why we're talking trends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're, talking, we're talking 2021 yeah. and and, yeah. and onwards, and these are the kind of things that we're spotting loud yeah. and clear. I mean, it's not it's not like Twitter. I think Facebook, WhatsApp maybe. WhatsApp's got so much potential. Oh, huge! huge. And yes, yeah, so the way that the, that is, that is owned by so, Facebook. The, the, the way that it <laughs> they won't. So Thanks, guys. The way that it's so personal. Yeah, and and it reaches in, and it's a conversation within that. You know, it's within with a group, of but it, and you know, you could say, but yeah, you can get that type of experience with Facebook groups or whatever. Mm. But no, WhatsApps. And look at the brands behind it. Immediate, like got, it's more involved. And got yeah. Facebook behind 
so it was Facebook behind WhatsApp. We've got uh, Tencent owns WeChat, Amazon between behind Twitch. I don't think those big, big companies, companies. Are gonna <laughs> let them stand by and go, well, let them phase out. Yeah. You know, these are big brands behind these apps. Yeah. And it's I, I, like you said earlier, I know that people hate that answer, but it really comes down to what you like, what, what's your brand, who's your audience, what's your message, and what's going to help convey. Yeah. But what's exciting about talking about this and seeing those big names behind it is that once you hear this, you are hopefully going, oh, that kind of sounds like something I could do. And, you know, you're going to really hurt yourself if you try to jump on everything. Mm. And yes, you should mm. keep to the safe, stable uh, marketing as well. But we're doing this trend because yeah, exactly. you might as well jump yeah, yeah, on yeah. something that fits your brand and, yeah. and experiment and mm. see what you can do. Mostly with this whole remote atmosphere that's happening right now, jumping into more digital can only benefit you if it's done to your brand identity and persona. Um, so we'll do seven and eight and then we'll do yep. questions. So yeah. number seven, micro segmentation. Long story short, big <laughs> becomes small, right? Yeah. So um, uh, I, I did some research on this recently and I said that I felt like traditional media went through a point where it went from mass to more niche and now digital is going through the same where it's gone from mass to niche. And I and we talked about it just before with the influencer stuff. So there's a few aspects of this. There's, um, there's like the micro influencers, micro connections and all these kind of things. And uh, what we've sort of summarized is that instead of going, here's a message for everyone, um, that people are starting to focus on more niches. Yeah, yeah, personalizing it. And so a lot of what we've talked about. It's, it, this it, is a quite general of everything yeah, we've discussed. discussed. Yeah. And I think the, the reason it's coming about is because it's getting easier to do. Yep. So it's easier and to possible. tailor. And don't yeah. you kind of expect that as a yeah. customer now? I don't want, you know, I, I want, if I'm going to be getting an ad while I'm having my personal time scrolling through my Facebook, I want to know that it's something that's, that's actually relevant, relevant yeah. to me. So, um, but yeah. into that, what's happening is they're forming communities. Mm -hmm. Like people are forming communities around niches. And what's happening is then you're getting smaller influencers popping up in a small niche. And before it was like Kim Kardashian, like, here's uh, my gel, everyone buy it, and thousands of people bought it. And now it's like, here's a chef that's done something in a small group for a small particular food item and people follow them in a small number mm -hmm. and it gets really good traction because of that sort of micro community sort of sense. That's what I like about the, the shift towards the micro is yeah. it, it's more accessible. So yep. co companies and, and small and medium companies can actually start to look at their different audience and customer base and, and try and identify a number of, influences that they can access yep. that um, their audience is resonating with. They don't have to be a huge star. Multi and, dollar. You know, yeah. and it yeah. doesn't cost them that. They can actually look into their customer base itself and say, well, who are my customer base is actually an influencer in their own right? Yeah. And how can we get them to be a net promoter of our business yeah. and to do it? reverse back over social media. So how do we do an initiative so that we get those great customers who love working with us to come back and promote us? So it might be the rise of the user-generated content. Yeah, I think so. Because I know that was a big thing a couple mm. of years ago and it kind of fizzled uh, out. No, it was really popular then. And then, like, I remember Sketches did this award-winning marketing campaign where they were like, take a photo of your sketches, doing your yeah, thing. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. That now, it's not done anymore. But I feel like now, now people you can are really Yeah, to you can engage, but you can drive that conversation a bit more. And, and but, right down to yeah. simple stuff, Mike, That's with, you know, multiple landing pages or multiple aspects of websites, depending on how you've channeled them through with ads, it's so much easier. Well, I was about to, to say, that's what we, messaging. Yeah, we would work on because if a, you know, if someone's left their cart for 60 days compared to someone who is constantly having bigger purchases, um, if they're looking at this certain product over the other, you can really start creating a persona of someone mm. and then utilizing someone like your services to make sure that those ads are very bespoke to that type of person. And we've been working with clients where we're creating very specific videos based on where they are in that journey and who they are and what they expect um, because there are different types of viewers and they expect different things. Um, and some of them want that more feel good experience. Others want the more technical background. Mm. And now if you do these micro uh, campaigns, uh, you can really segment it down to these very niche personas um, and give that even such a very bespoke experience. Mm. So the big thing that I look at it from a micro segmentation approach is that 
um, this is where we really get to see true marketers. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> the, to me, this is the difference between amateurs and professionals when it comes to marketing. Uh, when you look at an amateur's approach to it, you look at, say, you know, running some Facebook ads and you might go, okay, well, I want to target anyone that's, you know, over 35. <laughs> yeah. And that's how they'll run these ads. They say, it's so easy to run an ad. You just go, no, throw a whole heap of money in. There's the ads run and uh, no problems. Yeah. yeah. And you burn a lot of money very quickly mm. because you cast this very wide net and you appeal to, you try to appeal to too many people. Yeah. And so it really falls flat and it doesn't get very good returns. Whereas a professional comes in and looks at it and goes, that's too broad a market to go yeah. after. Yeah. Like, it you've got a limited though. budget. And let, no, no, I agree with you. Yeah. But, but I feel like businesses go, we know that, but we're not going to do it. Yeah. Like, as in, you, like you can say as a marketing it's person, like you can say, use the data. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the times I'll go, no, no, no. Like you said, like net is too wide. Let's pull it back. And they'll go, but but that only means we're targeting a small segment. Everything's going to go bad. I'm like, no, because you'll hit that target more often. And it means you can personalize the content. Mm -hmm. It means I can Which personalize is the video. Yeah. It's a, you we can, can personalize, personalize the, the customer the journey. The customer every, journey. Yeah, every, because if you know you're going after the 35 to 45 um, moms who love travel and, you know. And feel a sense of like maybe uh, adventure that's not being fulfilled. Yes. Like that's how. That's it. That's how targeted you can get. And yeah, when you absolutely. do that, you can have such a more fulfilling campaign. And, so and, and with data, you can determine very quickly whether that really micro group, micro segmentation is yeah. actually a valuable segmentation. Yeah. And yeah. that's that because at the end of the day, it's got to come back to that financial piece. Oh, of, of course. Okay. How do you make there's it? no point segment, 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 and yeah. then find that you've got it so narrow now. Yeah. <laughs> investing that much time and effort into it, actually, you're never going to make but a return. So that's where the yeah. data peels it back and says, too. actually, stop, don't start here, stop there, and you invest in that and you get a really, really strong. But it's not just about yeah. finding one. I reckon with the customers I work with, with the different videos, we actually create multiple different personas, but we pick their top. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Personas, yeah, absolutely. And those are the ones we go with. So that's just going to be learning over mm. time and developing who your customers are and what their personas are and getting the understanding of where are they located, what are their interests, what age are they, what sex are they, what are, you know, what is their background and creating those very, you know, niche identities. And off the market. back of that, there's a question okay. from Beatrice. Thank you. Uh, how would you address micro segmentation and messaging on an organization's website, i.e. the homepage? Um, so this is something that comes up a lot for me, being a copywriter and message marketing. Um, so the way I view it is your homepage is like your choose your own adventure um, sort of way to segment it. So what you do is you can address different. So if you've got a couple of different personas and you define those personas very, very clearly, what you do is you use the homepage as wording and design and branding and illustration to take people to the right place. Yep. And, and it's not an old practice, but it's something that a lot of people underutilize is they go, well, our homepage has to have one message and, and that's the only thing. And then we lose some people. Oh, well, right. Whereas the best way to do it is to say, like a, a big statement, a welcoming message, like you found this agency. And then it says, are you a, like, I find mm. that that is so effective. So much, so many good results I've had from clients is that, you know, are you looking for this? Are you looking for this? Does this sound more like you? Or how, are you frustrated by the minute that you start addressing those clients, you can actually say, okay, I've got five niches and here's five boxes on my website. And it can be however you can design it really nicely, but it just says click for more. And then you take them to a page that's directly for that micro segment. That's what I'm saying. People, yeah. won't, people won't go to the wrong segment. Like think about it, and people don't believe it until you say, go onto one of a, go onto a website that you're trying to buy. If you're a woman trying to buy women's clothing, right? You don't go men's clothing unless you're buying a gift, right? You just you just go, oh well, I'm here for women's clothing. You click women's clothing and and people forget that it works the same with every website. Yeah. You know, they go onto a website and a printer and they go, I'm not interested in this. I'm looking for pamphlets. So they find pamphlets, click on pamphlets. Um, if you're looking for a legal service, you go, no, nah, no, nah, don't need wills, estates. I need conveyancing. Click on conveyancer. It's the same. Yeah, also, and if you're doing your SEO or AdWords or marketing correctly, most of the time it's leading to a particular landing page Bingo. anyways, and then you can make it specifically <laughs> Um, to that. Because Google so, ranks I, I think for, pages, not websites. For it to work, there's a couple of things that they must really get right. One is who. Yeah. So who, who, who is who, that who, audience? Yep. What 
Mm-hmm. Are they looking for? And then what value as a business are you adding back to them? Yes. So if you What's get those three thing? things right, you can channel them through. If and, you, and they will. And you've, you know, They will you know. find it. But one thing I will say is when we look at sites, um, one of the things you can do, you can do some targeting. Um, so geographic is, is an easier one to do where we can actually identify rough locations for people. And you can then talk specifically to the location that they're in. Um, we can also do tracking solutions where you can actually – capture some information where when people come back to the site you actually can tailor the messaging to exactly. that person yeah, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. and so there's some some sophisticated and when they leave the back, when they leave stuff. the site as well you can yeah. yeah there's a whole lot of that stuff as well uh, and that's where we can then really start to personalize a website so the home page is always quite challenging but there are other pages within the site that becomes a lot a lot more easy to yeah. you know adjust the messaging so that it, it hmm. communicates the other thing you can do from a, a site design that we always recommend is that um take a multi-prong approach to your information. So to Chris's point around being able to get people to sort of self-segment based mm, on, self-segment. okay, if you way. know what your product is or you know what the product is and what you're looking for, great. Okay, we have, here's all the products that we offer and here's the specific types that you can look for. But you may not know what specific product you're looking for or service, um, but you can identify who you are. So you say, okay, yeah, a male, female, or you know, if you segment your customers in a different way, have that segmentation on the website. So they can go, oh, that's me. Mm. I'm that person. What solutions do you have for me? Mm. And so you're actually able to understand, you understand me, my situation and stuff, and then you're presenting the ideal solutions. So you can create multiple approaches to a website. It doesn't just have to be, oh, here's my service, come and buy it. And I think all good with that to sum yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's there. <laughs> it's definitely <laughs> happening. Yeah. Uh, and be bold. Like be bold yeah. segments. Mm. And the last one, but definitely not least, and we can't ignore as marketers, is the marketing ethic talk. <laughs> okay, <Yeah. laughs> and and so this is something that has become a huge thing, and I feel like twenty twenty one is no different. I know I saw that New Zealand is now implementing a similar law in December first, um, and I know that Australia has already had it for a couple of years. MBS, right? And we've got you know the GDPR and all these kind of consumer protections, but it's also the fact that people are starting to pull away as well. Like only ten years ago, people were like, "You want." my details here we go <laughs> right and now people are kind of pulling back and it's also about marketing respecting that space let's have at it because i think that this <laughs> is a big thing that uh, is going to change because it's not only just respecting their space but also how we adapt to that and what do we do in an ethical way mm. well i think look, from a branding perspective it's it's all about the way that you the the whole branding the values that you have yep. as a business what your brand identity is and overriding um, I think you mentioned earlier, uh, Ariel, it takes a whole journey to build trust. Yes. It takes a very yes. long time to build People trust. That. It takes yeah. a couple of seconds to, to lose it. it. Yeah. Once you've lost it, it's very, very hard to get it back. Um, I think we're moving into a space where uh, we've come from an area where we used to capture a lot of data and we didn't tell the customers what we were doing with that yep. data and we just used it and off we went and that was our right. Now we're moving to this space where actually um, you've got to flip it on its head and build trust with the customer in the data space, which is to have that. It's a privilege. Yeah. Yeah. So now if we're going to use your data, we're going to be really, really clear and upfront. And that being clear and upfront doesn't mean that click on this um, 20 to 30 page agreement that's written in font size four that you'll never read. (laughs) That's not trust, right? Trust is um, in really simple language. This is how we use your data. Yes. And by the way, if you're ever uncomfortable, click on, you can unsubscribe immediately and we will delete everything. It's as simple as that because when they start to believe that you're honest about the way you do it and that they can trust you, you'd be surprised how much more they're willing to accept what it is. I mean, you know how important it is when iPhones, Apple's, all their advertisements right now is just around um, data. That's how they're marketing Mm. the iPhone at the moment. It is. Saying you're protected. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But but it's also, it's not just negative. There's also opportunity, I feel. Like I'm a big advocate of making sure that, like Kristen, you said, being really genuine. and, And it's also, you know what it is? It's living up to the promise. Like the biggest example I have is that uh, your newsletter. Okay. The biggest problem that you get with unsubscribes is because you're not delivering what you promised. Like you say, sign up here for this. And then people sign up and then you give them something else. And they go, well, this is not what I'm here for. And I feel unsafe. And they leave. Whereas if you say, this is like you said, if you message it as this is what we're doing, 
we're not using or selling your data in the wrong way. We're literally catering some content for you to learn. Then you, that's what I've done with mine. And I get lots, lots of signups, which I yeah. couldn't believe. And, uh, and, and now I'm not getting any subscri- unsubscribers because I'm basically saying, this is what we promised. Yeah. This is what we're giving. No more, no less. Yep. Yeah. And, and, there's, there's, and the genuine is there. Yeah. And yep. so it's also, it's not just a negative, it's an opportunity. Yeah, it is a massive but opportunity. But in respect to your yeah. customer. Comes back, Mike, you must have oh, lines on this. Yeah. To me, it just comes down to trust. Yeah. In, in everything we do in business, everything with a, a customer, it's all about trust. And so ethics just falls back to if you're doing things that your customer can trust you on yep. and every activity you're doing is a trustworthy activity, then, then you're, you're, you're on the right side of things. And so I think uh, too often, and, and we've seen in the past, whether it's through the 90s, 2000s, where people sort of abuse that trust and just yep. do what they can. It was a bad era. Yeah. <laughs> It was the um, naughty era. <laughs> hopefully this, these days with the whole social responsibility and stuff, yeah. that, you know, businesses are very genuine about, hang on, you know what? I respect my customer. I respect the trust that they provide in yeah. me to provide an amazing service for them. Uh, and so when you're marketing and promoting yourself, if you maintain that trust and yeah. that's in terms of how just, we look up to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also win. just, I would say, you know, it's important for you if you work with other partners and you're putting them and they're uh, representing your brand to make sure that you take the time to know what they're doing with data and having that responsibility and not being yeah, ignorant about how you're handling yeah, yeah, um, yeah. this how information. Second party yeah. So, us. you know, taking the time to educate yourself on how that's, how it's working. We did just get the, uh, yes, the 10 minutes. The so 10 minutes. we will finish with a question and questions. Um, so the last thing is, is that remember that as we said at the start is not to think, Oh my gosh, that was a lot. We have to do all of it. The idea was to inspire inspire you and so uh, with with the final thing is you know think about what it what applies to you you know um what what do you want to include in your marketing plan this next year and going forward um what aligns with your goals um and what results are you looking for and what's within budget they're the key questions to be yeah. asking so it's not like well they said twitch better use twitch it's about thinking where's my brand where should it be and don't be afraid of help yeah, right. Reach out yeah. for for yeah. marketing assistance. Like another that, good you've plug. Got, you've, got, <laughs> you've got our details, but it's not only that. It's, it's like not, yeah, it's, I know. No, but, no, but there is there is yeah. professional. If you ever confused, there's so much data out there, yeah. and there's so much information and value and yeah. blogs and videos and things like that um, that are available. So don't feel like, well, they've just said it. Let's give it a go. Like, look at, just yeah. be inspired by what we've said tonight yeah. and say, I'm going to do more research on that. Yeah. I think that's where it needs to be. I mean, even all of us sitting up here, we know about all this. We're keeping abreast of this. Um, we need to be for all our clients, depending on which way they go. But we're not utilizing all of them for our own brand. No. We've no. taken the time to find our brand identity, uh, find our persona and know what's going to work for us, utilizing some of the things we've talked about tonight. So it's just about doing that for yourself as well. So do we have any questions at the moment? I saw one that was more overarching about service and tangibility. Um, there was one question that said, what do, was it with product versus more intangible items? Um, oh, here we go. Sorry, it's coming up now. Uh, okay, how would you then address, we oh, we did that, 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 that one. Do that one. Oh, I think we're, anyone last chance to do questions? Oh, there's one coming through. <laughs> okay. Oh yes, that was that one. So uh, any marketing advice or strategies you'd recommend for companies with products that are more intangible, i.e. services? Well, that's all of ours. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so we did kind of address it. Any, uh, I mean, look, I would say that just because you don't have a physical product doesn't mean that all of those don't apply to you. Mm. Like, I mean, I know as part of my business, you know, looking at other platforms like social media and TikTok and all those kind of things. Um, sure, there might not be a delivery service in terms of like arriving at your doorstep, but it's certainly in the way that you would deliver c- customer value, I would yeah. say. Did I mean, I think... Mm video is for services is more important than ever because a lot of times it means that you're putting in a very concise messaging uh, video exactly what your service does Mm -hmm. you're able to really explain it in a thorough and um, well-worded manner you would know how important it is because a lot of people have a hard time really relaying 
oh, why they're all the time. Yeah. And really. they say, this is what I want to say. Blah. And, and it could be, clean, clean, be clean. 10 pages <laughs> sometimes. And that's what happens on the website and content. And when you can put that into a 90 second video and your customers can just watch that and say, ah, oh, okay, I get what they do. And it can humanize the service as well. Mm. Um, so a lot of these things, they're just as important for a service as Equally, it is for a product. If not, if not more, yeah. The one thing I will say with a service is um, just think about what you're, what you're selling or, or providing um, and, and that will really shape how you communicate it. So when we think about services, you're either providing the actual service in, in, in what you're actually doing or it's the outcome. Yeah. And so when you're communicating, it, I think about, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, so think about how you want to communicate that and whether you sort of say, hey, we'll do, you know, we'll, we'll provide you plumbing services, you know, and it'll cost you X amount for us to, to do a whole bunch of different things. Um, or is it the fact that you're talking about, you know, fixing a tap or you're talking about renovating a bathroom? And so what you are selling is more the outcome of your services and the quality of what you do yeah. versus, hey, we'll be on site. It'll cost you. Three hundred dollars because we'll be on there for two hours, and that's what we're selling. Yeah. So I think, yeah. And from a branding perspective, uh, one, I think uh, you need to really be clear on what your brand identity is when yep. you're a services business, um, and you need to understand the messaging. So mm -hmm. not just um, what messaging you're sending through, but the language that you're using, because you need consistency in that language. And then it touches back onto your point, Mike. I think through your social and digital media, what you're trying to achieve is two things really one you're trying to show how um, your value proposition exceeds others mm. so you're talking about the outcome as you were saying um, and the other bit is the service that you provide is about the technical lead so and and that is the give back so when you are um, a services business a lot of what you put forward through social media is um, talking about how you're a technical expert at what you do and you're offering free information to people and sometimes there's, Lots you know, yeah, yeah. And your experience yeah. is the paid bit yeah. where they mm. come to you for. Mm. So that's how I think services businesses really need to drive the agenda. Well, I just want to say thank you, everyone, yes. so much for coming. I know we've got three minutes left. We're getting reminders. <laughs> um, so three minutes left. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I know that was, there was people in and outside of Australia. I hope that we all hope that you got a lot yeah. out of this. Yeah. Um, we'll sign off with Mike. If you want to say name? Just yeah, I'm Mike from Oddball Marketing. <laughs> so we'll, we'll end with. Let me give some context. But, uh, Mike and you sign off. We'll sign off as. All the panel. Well, yep. I've just done my yep. <laughs> done, done my stuff. I think, <laughs> uh, but it's uh, no, it's been it's been uh, really insightful actually, just hearing from you guys as well about yep. some of the different trends coming up coming up in 2021 and what you guys are experiencing as well. And uh, I think we're all looking forward to the end of 2020. Uh, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, just, just, just new He's like, oh, oh, it's done. <laughs> yeah, and that's it for me. Yeah, look, I, I agree. I think this was a really in, in a nice way to share thoughts about all our different key areas yeah. and yeah. Um, I'm excited for what 2021 happens. Yeah. yeah, me as well. We're super excited in the video space and um, all shameless plug. You guys, if you want to talk about this more, or there's anything more video or animation related, please reach out to Two Giraffes. We're happy to discuss some of the strategy and work out how to make 2021 just a kick-ass year. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, so yeah, look, really enjoyed it, guys. Thanks again for Full Marketers. I think um, I hope that everybody out there got uh, something really valuable out of this. And um, from our perspective, reach 2021, out. <laughs> yeah, reach out, um, keep an eye on the big picture, but there's so much opportunity now for you to really drill down on that customer journey. The data is there for you already, um, and it's just learning new ways to use it. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks,